Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Today's task is uh, to uh, shuffle snakes. Um, I don't have an awful lot of uh, baby snakes. Uh, I haven't really bred anything or acquired anything. So I'm going to uh, uh, move the uh, Sahara sand vipers, Serastes vipera, over to some bigger quarters because they sort of deserve that. And uh, uh, that will allow me to uh, maybe move the remainders over to one side or the other. And I can shut the power down on, on one set of bins uh, for now until some new acquisitions happen during COVID. There's not a lot of uh, Delta flights. Uh, so moving things from place to place is difficult, so uh, the safest way to move these across the room, of course, even though I do not expect any problems at all from these guys, still, uh, we wouldn't want to take a bite. <laughs> Somewhere in here is the big female, uh, Serastes Vipera, <laughs> so we'll see uh, in the other room when I hook her out. Uh, will make an appearance, uh, uh, although briefly. So what I'll do is I'll move this out of the way so I can uh, put her, well I'm not going to even use this because it's the lower, lower four bins. And we can use this hook. Somewhat cooperative. I already prepared uh, this yesterday, so it's already at temperature. Uh, so there's no, they don't cool down or anything like that uh, during uh, transfer. Oh, I see a head. Hello, yes, I am disturbing you. Oh, we're not going to be cooperative. So there we go. I may throw a piece of cork, cork bark in there for her, uh, so she has something rough to shed against. Uh, I don't know if the depth of sand is going to be, uh, well this is not really sand, this is crushed walnut, this is my preferred substrate for desert species. Um, I've heard some bad things about sand getting impacted. Uh, I've never had an impaction problem with this uh, crushed walnut substrate. So we'll uh, let her get accustomed to her new uh, bin where she has more space to hide. So what we'll do is, if the blue permits, we'll transfer uh, her label and her sex, although these are relatively easy to sex. Um, I'm going to put them in the exact same positions they were across the way. So when I pull the bin open, I know exactly who's going to be in there to greet me. So that's one. Uh, I'm going to move the other three in quick succession, but first I'm going to dump this substrate be done with it and we'll take this bin downstairs and recycle it. Alright, so here's the other female of the four animals I have. And she is uh, normally found on top as you can see her up, oh, she's hoochie coochieing. I need to submerge. Dive, Captain Dive! <laughs> So we're just going to move her across the way, and as you can see, uh, being female, that tail right at the anal scoot drops off to nothing. 
uh, again, uh, I considered uh, breeding these. Whoops. However, um, having done so once before, the babies are very tiny and very difficult to get to feed. Uh, they f mostly feed on invertebrates at that particular uh, size. Uh, subsequently, that makes it uh, very difficult to, to find invertebrates to feed. Easy girl. Uh, come on. Yeah, I know I don't often do this. There you go. Um, invertebrates like centipedes, baby scorpions, uh, uh, that's what they generally will start to feed on uh, at that, you know, once they're born. Uh, those that survive will move on to larger prey items, but uh, uh, those things are very difficult to get a hold of. That means that I have to uh, force feed them mouse parts until uh, they eat, take off on their own. Also, the babies all need to be kept separately because they will eat each other. Uh, this is an unfortunate thing that I found out also. So we'll let her settle in. Okay, now on to the boys. Nope. Some fresh poo in this one. Um, it's always a very interesting uh, exercise to try to find where the eyes are in the head. Um, I believe it to be right there. I think I see two little eye slits uh, right there. Um, Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh -huh. see the yep, it's very interesting to find those. These are desert landmines. So let's uh, go ahead and move this little boy over there. Hopefully these guys don't get too butt hurt at the move and, uh, and feed uh, the way they've been feeding in the past, which is quite well. Um, I feed them once every two weeks so they don't get obese which of course is uh, uh, a lot of a lot of keepers uh, overfeed their animals um, you can see how big those pupils are now <laughs> which means that it's either a looking think it's going to get fed or b it uh, wants to know what the hell is going on here you go bud oh you're gonna be a little toughy huh you're gonna be a little difficult there you go. You can see the males are much smaller. And if you look at that tail, it doesn't drop off at all hardly at the end, which means that it's uh, a male and not a female. Um, you notice I don't put water dishes in with these. Uh, and there was this uh, other keeper who buys a lot of books, but apparently can't read and understand them. He, he was giving these a bath in water. He was soaking them once a week. Uh, these snakes in the desert only see water during flood conditions and then if they're frightened for their lives. So uh, these guys get misted down the walls of their cage a couple times a week and that's all the water they need. Plus, I usually give them their food, uh, which has got water uh, in the fur. Uh, that's all they need for healthy uh, lives and they don't need to go swimming because they're a desert snake. Uh, that's the problem with the hobby is there's lots of people out there that think they know what they're doing and if you try to correct them, you're the bad guy because you hurt their feelings. Uh, I don't care about people's feelings, I care about the animals and if they're doing something 
that is not normal for that particular snake's natural history, uh, I will let them know about it. Okay, let's go with the last male. There he is. Uh, he's uh, already quite visible, and of course, usually when I open this uh, cage up, he's expecting something to eat, but you know, these are a nice weight. Uh, I feed them every two weeks. I feed them a small food item, and they're doing quite well, uh, and rather keep them in such small confines since I have space over across the way. I'll move them to bigger quarters and this will allow me to use these for uh, babies and such as they come along. <laughs> He's now got big pupils and it's like, what's happening? Huh? Okay, the Oh, the pupils just went the narrow, and now we're back the big, and he's like, I'm scared. Well, you know, I get it. I mean, this one you can see is just checking out his territory. Uh, I will try to find some cork bark to throw in here, so they have some uh, something. They've been shedding just fine, uh, but a piece of cork bark uh, might be useful. Come on, dude. Come on. Oh, are we going to play the limp noodle, huh? We are going to play noodle. You're attempting to play snake hockey. That's what you're attempting. All right, we'll go to the alternate method. Like that. It's not as graceful as hooking, but it's effective. Again, please note the tail, how that is fat at the anal scoot right there and goes all the way down. Uh, as compared to the female whose tail gets real skinny real fast and, and actually has a black uh, uh, set of markings on it. That's how you uh, tell the difference. So we will... Well, we need to put more of the substrate in so they can bury themselves. That's half the fun with these guys is watching them do the hula dance trying to get under the sand. Yeah. Well, you know, I was, uh, uh, I will probably add more substrate, um, but, you know, right now, uh, finances are a bit tight, and, uh, uh, having stuff, A, shipped here, and buying stuff, uh, I have to be very careful budget-wise, um, so I put a reasonable amount of substrate, which may make them happy. But we'll check in a few days and see exactly how they're doing. But certainly later on today, I will uh, spray the walls with water, which they won't like. Uh, but at least uh, they will uh, they'll get properly hydrated. And uh, uh, because they didn't get fed last weekend, so this weekend they'll get fed. So. Now they have a little bit of time to acclimate, uh, and we'll see uh, what goes on uh, in the next feed. Well, this little guy, the Southwest Speckled Rattlesnake, uh, who was born here, uh, I think four years ago in June, he was sort of the run to the litter and most difficult to keep alive, but as you can see, he's just a spectacular looking little snake. Well, he sort of needs his, uh, his cage cleaned up a little bit, so I'm going to move him in his bin uh, while I do that. He, of course, will not like the intrusion, but uh, uh, he will have to stay there uh, until I get this all cleaned out. Now, Um, there were six or eight babies born. Um, they were difficult to get feeding. Um, I sent them all off to uh, other other homes at this point, but I kept this guy behind uh, mostly because 
he's he's a problem feeder. Um, I don't know what his issue is, but you can present him with something to eat. He bites it, he holds it, and then if you come back sometime later, it's it's laying there on the floor of his bin. Um, and then if you stick it sort of in his face, uh, he will uh, he will eat it. And if you give him something that's a little bit oversized, like you know even a hopper for him. Uh, He'll regurgitate. There's something peculiar with his digestive system. So uh, I've held him back because I find sometimes uh, animals that I send to other homes, um, the new owners somehow manage to kill the uh, arrival, um, not necessarily right away, but over time. Uh, his parents I sold off to somebody who I really didn't know, uh, but, you know, was seemed pretty competent. Well, uh, he ended up killing the female. Uh, I don't remember the exact reason why, however. It's tragic, and I've had many offers for people to buy this mail from me, but I am very reluctant to, uh, to send him to another home simply because uh, he is such a, a difficult uh, character to, to care for. Um, I will uh, I will hold on to him uh, and I will be moving him to a bigger cage at some point in the near future uh, so he, you can see him uh, and not be a bin dweller uh, but uh, I normally do not keep s snakes they use crofab because crofab is very expensive and for this species I know from a friend who works with them in the laboratory one of his colleagues in the lab got bit and uh, required a lot of crofab to neutralize a bite from a small snake like that so uh, but I don't want to send them off someplace and have somebody kill them after I put four years of hard work into him. Uh, I think he's a permanent fixture here uh, for the rest of his life at the lair.